we're going to look at how to cool down some water with some ice and to calculate the final temperature. Here's a sample problem with 24.5 grams of ice. You can see at minus 11.8 degrees Celsius, and you drop it in some hot water. 107.4 grams of water, it's at 80 degrees. Calculate the final temperature. This is a pretty fun problem. We can calculate exactly what the final temperature is going to be, assuming no heat loss. So we've got this ice cube here, and we know the initial temperature. And now we're going to put this ice cube into the hot water. So energy is going to flow out of the hot water and into the ice. Okay, ice goes in to the water, but the heat is going to flow from the out from the water into the ice. And they give us some important heat capacities and enthalpy of fusion. We'll see how to use those in this problem. So that is hot water. Anything over 50 degrees is probably going to burn your lips. 50 degrees Celsius. Let's see how to do this problem. First of all, we have to think about how much energy it takes to warm up the ice to the phase change temperature, zero degrees, and then how much energy to get through the phase change. Let's do the first part. To heat it up, that requires a temperature change. We use what I call the MCAT formula. And the delta T in this is gonna take it up to zero from a negative 11.8. So that's my T final minus T initial, as you can see. And then there's the heat capacity of ice and the mass of ice. Flaps the delta T down there into an 11.8, and I do all the multiplication, I get 586 joules. Now, now in our mind, we visualize I have ice that's at zero degrees. Now I need to take it through the phase change. And to do that, um, I need to use the M times the enthalpy of fusion. Well, the enthalpy of fusion is given in kilojoules per mole. I need to convert that to a more usable uh, number. So I'm going to just convert the one mole into 18.02 grams of water. And I'll convert to kilojoules into joules. So it turns out to be um, 8,185 joules. Now, if I add those two together, that's the total amount of heat that I need to put into it to heat it up to ice and to melt it into water. Okay. So I'm going to compare that now to a thought that I have about the hot water. How much energy would it take to need to be released from the hot water to take it down to zero degrees? This is important because it helps me to think through what cues I need for one side of the equation and for the other. To cool it down to zero is the mass of the water because I'm thinking about that big cup of hot water now. now you, and it's water, so the heat capacity is 4.18. 4.18, that's what's given in the problem, joules per gram Celsius. Just wanna see how much energy it takes. And I probably won't use this number, but I need to do this calculation. And it changes by minus 80 degrees. So that turns out to be a negative 35,000, almost a negative 36,000 joules that needs to be released to get it down to zero to that phase change. But I only need about 9,000 joules to warm up the ice because the heat's going to flow from the water into the ice. What this means is that there's plenty of energy in that 107.4 grams of water. So I treat that as a different system that can flow out into the ice. So I need to add a third Q to the ice problem, to the ice side. Because remember, all the energy is flowing from water into ice. So that's why I put a negative in front of it. So we already did a Q1 and a Q2 to get it, the ice to liquid water. Now I'm going to get that, um, that water and heat it up all the way to some final temperature. So I need the MCAT formula again to take the ice part of it up to some final temperature. And then this is my MCAT that I need to cool down water to some final temperature. Well, what final temperature? I don't know. So I leave that as a variable but it is the same on both sides. So I have water at zero degrees. So that's why I have the initial temperature of this water uh, is zero. The other water on the other side is 80 degrees. So on the left side, still my ice. I keep track of that, that mass of ice, which is now cold water. And I already know what Q1 and Q2, we already did that calculation, 8,771 8, joules. 
And then I just distribute or multiply my two numbers, to the mass and the heat capacity, multiply by the TF, and then I also distribute it to the zero degrees Celsius. Ah, how nice. When I do it to the zero, that all turns into zero. So I really just have one term from the distribution on the side. And I also multiply numbers, distribute to the TF, oh, and then I'm going to have to distribute that to the 80. 107.4 times 4.184 is negative 449. And that's I'm loose with my units right now, so we can focus in on the numbers. Uh, we're going to end up with the temperature in Celsius. But find my, I got all my um, variable here, TF on the left side, 102.4. Distribute the negative 449 to the T and then to the 80. Get my have some variables and I have some va uh, values. So I'm going to um, put all the TFs to the left side and then put all the values to the other side. That would require adding 449 TFs to both sides and then subtracting 8871 from both sides. Do the math, you'll see you'll get this um, 551.4 um, temperatures into uh, this 27. 1,144 joules. So I'll just divide both sides by 551.4. And you'll see that's 49.2. And that is the final temperature of the water. There's no ice because it melted. So one cube of ice can really cool that water down. And that's below 50. You probably could sip on that and it'd be okay. Hope that helps you figure out the ice melting problem.